Hello, welcome to Beaverton First United Methodist's online worship service for November. We're in November, November 8th, 2020. My goodness, we've been doing this for a while and I have missed seeing each and every one of you. I'm picturing you right now sitting in the pews. I imagine where you would normally sit and I pray you are all well. If this is the first time you've joined us, well, welcome, welcome. I'm glad you're here. Let's join in prayer and song and have a glorious day. This is the 
everyone. My name is Dondra. I'm the praise leader here at Beaverton First United Methodist Church, and we are so glad you could be with us today. Before we get started, let's join together in our vision statement. Here at the heart of Beaverton, Christ calls us to feed our community, body, mind, and spirit. And I just want all of you to know how much I appreciate being able to join together on Sunday mornings in fellowship with all of you, even on this remote form. After a week like this, it's nice to know that there is a loving community with open arms to return to. And I love that. Thank you so much. Now, let's all join together in prayer. Lord, it's been, it's been quite a week. And we always ask you to guide us on the journey you've placed us on. But we want everything spelled out so we know what to expect. You let us know that's not the way life works. This week was a great reminder of that. For so many people who deal with uncertainty and pain and hurt, hope is just a distant vision. Despite that, your love comes through to us in the most amazing ways. Today, Lord, for all people everywhere, we offer prayers of healing and hope that their lives and ours may be filled with your love and peace. In Jesus' name we ask this. Amen.
John chapter 16 verses 16 through 33. It is titled Our Source of Hope. In a little while you won't see me anymore, but a little while after that you will see me again. Some of the disciples asked each other, what does he mean when he says in a little while you won't see me, but then you will see me, and I'm going to the Father. And what does he mean by a little while? We don't understand. Jesus realized they wanted to ask him about it. So he asked, are you asking yourself what I meant? I said in a little while you won't see me, but a little while after that you will see me again. I tell you the truth, you will weep and mourn over what is going to happen to me, but the world will rejoice. You will grieve, but your grief will suddenly turn to wonderful joy. It will be like a woman suffering the pains of labor. When her child is born, her anguish gives way to joy because she has brought a new baby into the world. So when you have sorrow now, excuse me, so you will have sorrow now, but I will see you again. Then you will rejoice and no one can rob you of that joy. At that time, you won't need to ask me for anything. I tell you the truth, you will ask the Father directly, and he will grant you your request because you use my name. You haven't done this before. Ask using my name, and you will receive, and you will have abundant joy. I have spoken these matters in figures of speech, but soon I will stop speaking figuratively and will tell you plainly all about the Father. Then you will ask in my name. I'm not saying I will ask the Father on your behalf, for the Father himself loves you dearly because you love me and believe that I came from God. Yes, I came from the Father into the world, and now I will leave the world and return to the Father. Then his disciples said, at least you are speaking plainly and not figuratively. Now we understand that you know everything, and there's no need to question you. 
From this we believe that you came from God. Jesus asked, Do you finally believe? But the time is coming. Indeed, it is here now, when you will be scattered, each one going his own way, leaving me alone. Yet I am not alone, because the Father is with me. I have told you all of this, so that you may have peace in me. Here on earth you will have many trials and sorrows, but take heart, because I have overcome the world. Thanks be to God. Good morning and welcome to our online worship. I'm Pastor Jefferson Chow and I'm so glad you can join us here today. This whole week has left our nation sitting on the edge of our seats. So before we begin, I would like to ask everyone to take a moment to stand if you are able or sit up straight, close your eyes and take a deep breath. As you inhale, Invite the Holy Spirit and seek something positive. And when you exhale, let go of anything negative. One more time. Inhale something positive and exhale, letting go of anything negative. Now, a lot has happened during this election that we won't get into but I was reminded of a statement from Nobel Prize winner Toni Morrison on her interview on racism. The interviewer asked Toni Morrison about her take on Rodney King and Los Angeles and the fall of that experience. She said, the most remarkable thing to me about Rodney King and what happened afterwards was people kept saying, Oh, this terrible explosion. Oh, the riots. Oh, it was awful and it could have been avoided. But what struck me the most about the people who were burning down shops and stealing was how long they waited. The restraint, not the spontaneity, the restraint. The moment they saw, they first saw those tapes they waited for justice for almost a year. Nobody did a thing. They waited. That is amazing to me. In this year's election, that is exactly what America did. America advised the nation to vote. And instead of making a quick decision, they announced that the election doesn't end until every vote is counted. Besides a few distractions from a few voters, America patiently waited until Friday. America had hope in the system. America had hope in democracy. Most Americans restrained their actions until all the votes were counted. Besides the hope in our voting system, America had hope in each president. When Biden and Trump gave their cam campaign speech to the American people, they knew what every Amer human being wanted. Hope. Hope in a great economy. Hope for this COVID pandemic to be over. Hope in equality. And hope for unity. As I was reading the Gospel of John, I imagine Jesus traveling town to town with his disciples, spreading hope to all people, giving campaign speeches about a father who forgives, a father who loves us, a father who gives us eternal life only if we have faith in him. Now let's imagine in our scripture reading today that Jesus had ran for president and it's down to the last three states to declare who will become president. Now. Anything could happen. Either Jesus could win or his rival Satan will win the election. As the nation patiently waits for the count, Jesus gathers his disciples and has a pastoral speech of what will come of him. So before this speech, Jesus explains the function of the Holy Spirit to the disciples. 
Jesus tells the disciples that the Spirit will proclaim the things that are to come and reiterate what Jesus has already said. Jesus explains to the disciples that the Spirit will bring glory to Jesus. The Spirit works of glorifying Jesus has present and future dimensions. In the present, the glory of Jesus' love and faithfulness will be manifested by the work of the Holy Spirit through a new covenant community. And in the future, the same Spirit will lead the church to see Jesus' glory forever in the Father's house. And this is how Jesus explains what will happen. He says, in a little while, you won't see me anymore. But a little while after that, you will see me again. Now notice Jesus says a little while twice in this sentence. Jesus is implying the time when he will go to the Father through his death on the cross and his disciples will not see him anymore. But what does the second a little while mean? Let's take a minute and ponder on what the second a little while means and focus on the first meaning. After Jesus says this message to the disciples, they begin to question what Jesus meant. The disciples questioned each other and said, What does he mean when he says, In a little while you won't see me, but then you will see me, and I am going to the Father? And what does he mean, a little while? We don't understand. Doesn't this sound familiar? We can relate this to our presidential debates. When Biden and Trump were countering each other with certain arguments, humanity began to question what they were saying. Like the disciples, humanity was distressed by the statements and wanted answers. Unfortunately for the disciples, they weren't able to fact check Jesus with the technology we have today. But the disciples had something better. Better than the internet to fact check Jesus. They had Jesus with them. If I were a disciple during those times, I would have asked Jesus what he meant. Think about it. If you were one of the disciples who witnessed miracle after miracle that Jesus performed, wouldn't you trust what Jesus was telling you? I know I would. Jesus knew that the disciples wanted to ask him, so he said, Are you asking yourselves what I meant? I said, In a little while you won't see me, but a little while after that you will see me again. I tell you the truth. You will weep and mourn over what is going to happen to me, but the world will rejoice. You will grieve but your grief will suddenly turn to wonderful joy. So, what does this all mean? Jesus repeats himself, then he tells the disciples that they will weep and mourn over what is going to happen, but the world will rejoice? Remember when I said that the first a little while meant Jesus is implying the time when he will go to the Father through his death on the cross and his disciples will, will not see him anymore? When you hear the word weep and mourn, what does it usually mean? Back then, when you heard the word weep and mourn, were used often, it meant mourning for the dead. So what is Jesus telling the disciples? When Jesus goes to the Father through the death on the cross, the disciples will weep and mourn. But here's what the second a little while means. That Jesus', that Jesus resurrection, which will impart new life, will turn the disciples' sorrow into joy when they see him again. Jesus is telling us that our source of hope begins when we are shattered in our sorrows and seek joy in him. Jesus com compares turning sorrow into joy with a woman in labor. He says, it will be like a woman suffering the pains of labor. When her child is born, her anguish gives way to joy because she has brought a new baby into the world. So you have sorrow now, but I will see you again 
then you will rejoice, and no one can rob you of that joy. At the time, you won't need to ask me for anything. I tell you the truth. You will ask the Father directly, and he will grant your request because you use my name. You haven't done this before. Ask using my name, and you will receive, and you will have abundant joy. A woman undergoes pain, anguish, and sorrow at the hour when she has to deliver a child. But after she delivers the child, she forgets the pain, anguish, and sorrow because of the joy of a child is born in the world. Jesus is teaching his disciples and us that no one can take away our joy through persecution or hatred when we trust our hope in him. This is why Jesus says to ask using his name and we will receive and we will have abundant joy. Jesus wants us to never give up hope in him. Jesus is saying when you are overwhelmed with the situation, Ask for peace through the Father using His name. When you are feeling alone, depressed, and sluggish due to this pandemic, ask for strength through the Father using His name. If you are afraid and need reassurance, ask for comfort through the Father using His name. Jesus doesn't want anyone to be in pain, anguish, or sorrow. No! Jesus wants all of us to have abundant joy through him. That means we need to continue to have hope in Jesus. Like our nation, patiently waiting for every vote to be counted, we need to trust in the work Jesus is doing in our life. We need to seek Jesus when times are tough. When we don't understand what to do, we need to patiently wait for Jesus. Because Jesus is asking us, do you finally believe? But the time is coming, indeed, it's here now, when you will be scattered, each one going his own way, leaving me alone. Yet I am not alone because the Father is with me. I have told you all this so that you may have peace in me. Here on earth, you will have many trials and sorrows, but take heart because I have overcome the world. Jesus encourages us to be cheerful in phases of tribulation by assuring us that he has already overcome evil in this world. Perse persecution will have no power over us because our source of hope is in Jesus who won the victory on the cross. And those who believe in Jesus who have hope in Jesus will overcome evil in the world by the power of his name. Lately, I have been reading a lot of short inspirational stories and I came across a story called the marble statue that intertwines with our scripture. In the middle of a beautiful city, there was a museum laid with beautiful marble tiles and with a huge marble statue as a part of the display. Many people from all over the world visit the museum every day and admire the beautiful craft statue. One night, the marble tile started talking to the marble statue. The marble tile said, hey statue, don't you think it's, it isn't, it's not fair that everybody from all over the world come all the way here to admire you while ignoring and stepping on me? The marble statue replied, My dear brother, marble tile, don't you remember we are actually from the same cave? Yes, said the marble tile, I do. That is why I, I feel it is even more unfair. Both of us were born from the same cave and yet the world treats us so differently now. This is so unfair. The marble statue answered, Yes. You are right, my brother, but do you still remember the day when the sculptor tried to work on you, but you resisted his tools? The marble tile said, 
Yes, I despise that guy. How could he use those nasty tools on me? Well, said the marble statue, since you resisted his tools, he couldn't work on you. When he decided to give up on you, he started working on me instead. I knew at once that I would be something different and unique after his efforts. I borne all the painful tools he used on me and allowed him to craft me as he wanted. The marble tile replied, but those tools were so painful. The marble statue said, my brother, there is a price for everything in life. Since you decided to resist and give up halfway, you can't blame anyone who steps on you now. The marble tile silently listened to his brother's words and started to reflect on it. A Buddhist monk, Tanach Hatch, said, hope is important because it can make the present moment less difficult to bear. If we believe that tomorrow will be better, we can bear a hardship today. America has patiently waited for our presidential results. All of us have bared the pain, anguish, and sorrow in our nation. Many Americans are in abundant joy with the results and others are dealing with hardship. No matter what the results were, many Americans are hoping for peace. As we go forth for a little while, we will endure pain. But our hope is to come to an understanding with each other. As Christians, let us continue to ask for peace through the Father in the name of Jesus, having hope that things will work out, especially when it seems otherwise. Our hope is in Jesus that helps us stay calm and peaceful when things seem impossible. Jesus believes you. Jesus believes you will get through any obstacle and hope reminds you of the time you made it through.
Now may the God of peace, who through the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, that great shepherd of the sheep, equip you with everything good for doing his will. And may he work in us what is pleasing to him through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever.